Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for being here today. We'll go ahead and get started. This is a uh, city council regular meeting. Today is Tuesday, November 7, 2023. It is 5.31 p.m. We are here at the council chambers at City Hall, 100 South Monroe Street, Eagle Pass, Maverick County, Texas. We always start with the establishment of quorum. We do have a quorum with uh, Mayor Pro Tem Davis, uh, Councilman Garcia, Councilwoman Cruz, and myself, Mayor Salinas. Absent is Councilman Elias Diaz. Moment of reverence. We always like to pay respects to um, our military, people that are abroad and, and here in the US. So if we can please take a moment of silence in their honor. Thank you very much. We also, uh, we want to inform the public of uh, the activities that we have uh, for this week and especially the, the veterans parade that will be starting on Saturday at 10 o'clock, Mr. Murua, is that correct? Ceremony, ceremony that uh, 10 o'clock at Plaza San Juan, and the parade starts at 11. Excellent, so we're having a, 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 the ceremony for our veterans that we're very grateful for at, at 10 o'clock in the morning at Plaza San Juan, mm -hmm. and then the parade starts at, at 11. 11. And then we'll have barracks and Bruce also in honor of our veterans. Excellent. So we invite the whole community. This is a, a beautiful parade, a family event. So we invite everyone from Eagle Pass, Maverick County, the surrounding areas to please join us in our Veterans Day Parade this Saturday. Today we also have a very special uh, recognition. And for this recognition and proclamation, I would like to invite City Council, if you could join me up here, please. officially opened on October 24, 2021, built on the land that served the soldiers that once served at Eagle Pass Army Airfield in 1942. Task Force West was the original task force at Camp Charlie until September 2022, when command was turned over to Task Force Eagle, which is still in command today, and whereas Task Force, <coughs> force Eagle, known as Camp Charlie, is a 20-acre community made up of contractors, soldiers, and local residents that keep the camp's daily operations running. The soldiers of Camp Charlie radar base proudly support the state of Texas and their adopted city of Eagle Pass and Maverick County, Texas. And whereas for the thousands of soldiers that have been stationed at Camp Charlie, Eagle Pass, Maverick County, Texas, they have seen as more than just, they are seen as more just men and women. We embrace them as sons and daughters and of Eagle Pass and we welcome them to our city. Camp Charlie is a home away from home. And whereas the city of Eagle Pass commands the Task Force Eagle for their devoted dedication in protecting our community and making Eagle Pass, Maverick County, home to Camp Charlie. 
Now therefore I, Orlando Salinas, Mayor of the City of Eagle Pass, do hereby proclaim this day as Camp Charlie Day in the City of Eagle Pass, and I urge all citizens to take this opportunity to express our appreciation to Task Force Eagle on their fir first anniversary at Base Camp Charlie. In witness hereof, I hereunto set my hand on this day of 2023 of November 7th. Thank you so much. Appreciated from us and Joint Task Force Operation Lone Star Headquarters up in McAllen. So we're down in McAllen, right? Thank you, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Appreciate it. Thanks again. Right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Moving on to citizens' communications. As always, uh, as everybody knows, there's a, a three-minute limit on these uh, communications. That's not meant to cut anybody off. It's just meant to give everybody a fair amount of time to speak. We will start with uh, Ms. Leticia Mancha. OK, sure. What's his name? Trinidad Flores. OK, we'll start with Mr. Trinidad Flores. And is somebody keeping the time? I can I can put the timer here. Thank you. Hold on one sec. Thank you, Ms. Yes, sir. Oh. Good afternoon. Yes, uh, distinguished members of Eagle Pass City Council, I'm here to express my thoughts, concerns, and questions as a taxpaying citizen regarding two requests for a creation of a city backed public improvement district and the request for the volunteering annexation of over, over 2,300 acres of land. Although growth is always a good sign, we must first look out for the interests of our community, resident, taxpayers, and not serve the interests of land developers or political contributors that are looking to use the city's approval to take advantage of these limited resources available to fund private tax businesses like the one we're dealing with in these two requests. And by annexing over 2,300 acres of land, the city land mass will grow about 30% of what it currently is. Keep in mind that as a voice concerns with the next several questions, the first question is why even take on such a consideration if it increases the burden on the city services and the availability. It is understood that the public improvement district infrastructure will be taken care of through the, the PID assessments. But for years we have seen how the city struggles to hire, retain personnel to provide services such as law enforcement, protection and fire and EMS personnel. This type of issues will only be exacerbated with poorly managed programs. While these options may be attractive mechanisms to provide additional infrastructure and amenities, any PID policy should be carefully written to ensure that any burden 
or problems are voted for the city's state. For example, I'd like the city council representative to answer what problems, if any, would fall and ask the regular citizen taxpayers if the PID creators experience issues with the bonds they seek, which are backed by the city in the amount not to exceed 400 million. Would be the taxpayers be stuck with the debts, lawsuits, or any other legal issues if the projects fail to generate the sufficient revenues to pay off the city back loans? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Le Leticia Mancha. Distinguidos miembros del Consejo Municipal de Igle Paz, estoy aquí para expresar mis pensamientos, inquietudes y preguntas como ciudadana que pague impuestos con respecto a dos solicitudes para la creación de un distrito de mejora pública, respaldado por la ciudad y la solicitud para la anexión voluntaria de más de 2.300 acres de tierra. Aunque el crecimiento es un buen señal, primero debemos velar por el interés de los contribuyentes residentes en nuestra comunidad y no servir a los intereses de promotores inmobiliarios o contribuyentes políticos que buscan utilizar la aprobación de la ciudad para aprovechar los pocos recursos disponibles para financiar negocios privados como el que se está tratando a través de esta ciudad de estas dos solicitudes. Al anexar más de 2.300 acres de tierra, la masa terrestre de la ciudad crecerá aproximadamente a un 30% de lo que es actualmente. Tengan eso en cuenta mientras expreso mis inquietudes con las siguientes preguntas. Primero, la primera pregunta, ¿por qué tomar tal consideración si podría aumentar la carga sobre los servicios de la ciudad y su disponibilidad? Se entiende que la infra infraestructura PID se cuidará mediante evaluaciones. Pero durante años hemos visto cómo la ciudad lucha por contratar y retener personal para brindar servicios tales como protección policíaca y personal de bomberos y EMS. Estos tipos de problemas solo se verán exacerbados con un programa mal gestionado. Si bien estas opciones pueden ser mecanismos atractivos para proporcionar infraestructura y servicios adicionales, Cualquier política de PID debe redactarse cuidadosamente para garantizar que se evite cualquier carga o problema por el bien de los ciudadanos. Por ejemplo, me interesa que la ciudad respondiera sobre qué problemas, si los hubiera, recaerá sobre nosotros los ciudadanos contribuyentes comunes si los creadores del PID experiencian problemas en pagar los bonos que buscan respaldados por la ciudad en una cantidad que no exceda 400 millones de dólares. Nos quedaríamos atrapados con deudas, demandas u otros problemas si sus proyectos no funcionan o no generan los ingresos suficientes para cubrir el costo de los préstamos de bonos respaldados por la ciudad. Otra preocupación es, es si la creación de estas áreas que vienen con una valoración más alta en el precio de la propiedad debido al formato utilizado para generar ingresos por un mayor costo de vida se extenderá a cualquier área cercana del PID, especialmente cuando las uh, tasaciones de propiedades se llevan a cabo cuando cualquier cosa se utiliza para aumentar el valor de las propiedades en esta ciudad. Estructurar y establecer este tipo de programa aumenta el precio general de compra de propiedades, lo que podría disuadir a las empresas y a los futuros residentes de mudarse a nuestra comunidad. Ánimo al ayuntamiento a celebrar foros públicos e informar a los residentes sobre los planes. Se pueda aprender tanto lo positivo como lo negativo de esto. Algo más que me concierne es que se debe analizar la medida que este plan se realizó con información privilegiada. Estos temas se han discutido en el pasado durante las reuniones. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Mr. Mancha. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Um, <coughs> the reason I'm here tonight 
is that I have some questions that I would like to ask council, mayor, okay? And, and it's not because of ignorance, it's because we don't know what's going on. And this is what, why we're here. Why does the city council want to establish improvement district number one? If approved, what will the taxpayer be obligated to provide? And where will the infrastructure come from? Do the private land owners own water rights on this acreage? What is the oversight for improvement district number one? And what role will the city of Eagle Pass have? Why had the establishment of improvement district number one not been socialized among the taxpayers? Even though this elected body is committed, is committing millions of dollars with taxpayers' money. Prior to voting to approve improvement district number one, I asked this elected body if the five million dollars committed to pay for the establishment of the four-year university has been appropriated. Does the city of Eagle Pass have millions required to establish the district? What is the oversight for improvement district number one? And what participation will the city council have on this board? For these reasons, I request that the vote for the establishment of this district be tabled for a later date to provide you enough time to search to research and answer these questions. The taxpayers of the city of Eagle Pass deserve the courtesy from these elected officials to provide us with these answers. And thank you, and uh, wish you well. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mancha. Everybody. Thank you, sir. Ms. America Garcia Graywell. So my name is America Garcia Graywall. I live here in Eagle Pass. I'm from Eagle Pass. My roots are here and they go deep. Um, I'm here today to ask you to change Eagle Pass for the better, back from the course that it turned on to in 2021. Last night, Pastor Leva, Pastor Vasquez, Pastor Luis, and a missionary named Danny Salazar, all from Eagle Pass, along with Sol Ross students, Eagle Pass ISD students, your constituents were locked out of the boat ramp. We've been holding a monthly Rio Grande Memorial Vigil to mark the needless loss of lives in the Rio Grande for months now. We were denied access. We went there early in the day and we said, we're holding the vigil there. We spoke to DPS. They said there should be no problem. We showed up and nobody could unlock the door. We called, nobody could let us in. Mayor, I texted you. We were not allowed access to the boat ramp this month. We were denied access to our own public space, our own sacred ritual, our own expression of grief and solidarity. We were silenced. But this is not an isolated incident. This is part of a larger pattern of abuse and discrimination that we on the border, it's not just Eagle Pass, we on the border have been enduring for too long. Did any of us get told that we we're going to be locked out of our own town with Operation Lone Star? That our teachers would be told over and over again there's no money for them, even as Texas spends $2.5 million a week to create a political spectacle? That we here on the border would receive four times the rate of moving vehicle violations than the rest of the state of Texas. That's it. We all know, don't run a stop sign, don't run a light, you're going to get a ticket. The rest of the state doesn't have to deal with that. We don't want this. We don't deserve this. We don't need this. This is purely political theater. It's part of a larger plan designed to incite fear, to injure, and even to kill people. It's no surprise that it's hurting us too here in Eagle Pass. Militarization of our border, the criminalization of our neighbors, the degradation of our environment cannot be the right choice. I beg of you, it's not too late. Say no to the hate, stand up for what's right, and do as Jesus asked us and love your neighbors. Love does not look like concertina wire. Love does not look like containers along the river. 
please tell Operation Lone Star to seize their operations in Eagle Pass in Maverick <coughs> County. They can enforce state laws without a blank check from Eagle Pass. I ask you today to hear our voices, to answer our telephone calls. Make your choices matter. Make your actions count. I ask you to choose love. Thank you. Mr. Jesse Fuentes. Yes, sir. Uh, just a question on procedure uh, first before I start. Uh, I'd like to speak about a topic during this three minutes and then uh, also would like to speak on the first item on the agenda, which is, uh, is that okay? Is that? Uh, yes, because that's a public hearing, so you'll be able to speak, right? I, but I you'll come back during yes. the I can come back during you, the, okay. You cool. can come back in the public hearing when I open that and you can speak on cool. it. Cool, all right, great. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Mayor, uh, Honorable Mayor, and distinguished council members and uh, city staff, and administration and those in attendance. Uh, I'm here on behalf, once again, of the Rio Grande River and just to advocate for uh, what I believe to be uh, the sustenance of, our, of life for our community. And uh, I'm gonna give you a brief update. Two weeks ago, I put uh, three documentarians on the river and they couldn't get out anywhere because of the concertina. They had to travel eight and a half miles down to the Kickapoo uh, Casino area. and. Uh, they were excited about it. It was early in the morning. I put them in there, and uh, when I picked them up, they were all crying. Yeah, all of them, because of what they saw on the river. And not a lot of people have seen what's on the river. You gotta get out there and see it for yourself. There's some incredible, incredible cruelty happening out there. and. Uh, most of the community doesn't have access to that. I do because I'm on the water. But uh, today, I had another group of French journalists that I uh, took to the river. And, uh, and I have more schedule for next week and more schedule for the week after that. And uh, I'm telling you that uh, we shouldn't, as a city government, allow it to be seen this way. Our community shouldn't be seen this way. We shouldn't allow this type of cruelty to occur. But uh, I understand you're between a rock and a hard place. Uh, there's an issue between federal and state, and city is caught in the center. But uh, if one of you or some of you could at one time take some time off your schedule to go out there and check it out for yourself, and maybe, maybe you'd form a better opinion about what's going on. But uh, uh, it's pretty serious. And it continues to happen, and, and I'm concerned about it. I had brought up a suggestion to uh, Mr. Murua last time I met with him that we create a multi-lock chain at the boat ramp where it's locked. And they come up with an excuse that they don't have a key to open it. Like any ranch that you access in our county, multiple agencies have different locks. I'd like to have a lock for my business that does business on the river so I don't have to hunt them down to open up the gate. It's simple, cut, put a new master lock, put a key. That's how I get on the river. And that's what I ask of you. And thank you for your time and your hard thank work you. and your dedication. I appreciate everything you do for this community. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. <coughs> Moving on to public hearings, item one, continuation of the suspended public hearing held on September 26, 2023. Pursuant to a petition submitted by Sonia Jenfen, Bayer Jenfen, Linda Zamora and Sergio Zamora to establish the City of Eagle Pass Public Improvement District Number 1 under and pursuant to the provisions of Chapter 372, Local Government Code of 2,148.58 acres of land lying and situated inside the extra uh, territorial jurisdiction of the City of Eagle Pass and closing of public hearing. This public hearing is open at 5.56 p.m. Mayor Council, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, there's several items within the agenda that relate to this uh, public hearing uh, discussion. So we do want to touch on those just to make sure we, uh, we give the full picture as to what's going on with this agenda. Please. So we do have agenda item number one, which is the continuation and closing of the public hearing uh, for, on the formation of the Public Improvement District. 
Then item number nine, which is the third reading on the annexation of the over 2,000 acres. Item number 12, which is the actual resolution creating the public improvement district. And then item number 15, which is the finalization of the development agreement. So I want to start off by talking about the specific area in question regarding the public improvement district. So this is the map. Uh, this is Loop 480. This is Indio Highway. Uh, Microstar Bowling Alley is here, so across the street from there. So I'll make sure uh, everybody's aware of the location. Yes. So it's over 400 acres and, uh, when we're talking about uh, the proposed PID number one. So I want to go over some of the basics. I know we've talked to, to council about this uh, for public knowledge. Can you uh, dis just to make it clear for the public, yes. the, can you just distinguish the whole area is 2,000 acres, but right now we're just talking about 400? Correct. So the proposed annexation is 2,000 acres, but the PID itself is only for uh, just over 400 acres. Perfect. So uh, when talking about the public improvement district, uh, it's a defined area where improvements will be undertaken and solely paid by a special fee placed on properties within the PID. So everything re revolving around the, the public improvement districts are improvements made in this district paid by the owners of land within the district. It is not for the public at large. So at the request of the property owners, the city may establish the PID to fund improvements as deemed reasonable to meet the needs of that development. In this case, the city has recognized the potential for economic development and community benefit that the, pros, the proposed development could provide. Can, can you, uh, make, so the, the people outside the PID, if you don't own property inside the pit you don't pay taxes you won't you, you nothing will change you're not you in get, you get no improvement but you also get no uh, fee assessed or your taxes don't go towards uh, those improvements okay. correct uh, so how does the city benefit so economic development perspective uh, the city has identified the need for additional industrial and commercial land to support private sector growth this growth directly leads uh, to more investments in our community and more employment opportunities. The PID allows access to funding that will speed up development that could take significantly longer if it was occurring organically. In terms of financial res resources, the proposed area is not within city limits currently. So if the development were to occur on its own, the city would stand to benefit nothing from it. Yes, we could get some incidentals from employment generated by that, but in terms of taxes, uh, property taxes or sales taxes, there, there really is no benefit no. because it is outside city limits. Uh, so uh, in return for the creation of the PID, the developer has agreed to annex the over 2,000 acres into the city of Eagle Pass. Uh, when it comes to the development, the other taxing entities also stand to, to benefit for, from this development, including the school district and the hospital district, because those tax dollars would also go to them. Uh, in terms of community needs within the development agreement, we've had this discussion with council uh, on additional benefits that the city uh, could get to address existing issues. So we have some issues in the development agreement regarding parkland, land for public safety use, and right, right of ways for future roadway expansions. So just kind of summarizing some of the basics that we thought were really important to highlight. If a pit is established, the, the bonds may be issued for the developers to make improvements within the boundaries of the pit. The improvements have to comply with state law, city codes, and the requirements within the agreement that the city is negotiating. This one's really important, the next one. The debt and the risk of the pit bonds is the responsibility of the developers. Not the city. Uh, not the city. They are responsible for paying the debt, and ultimately, if for some reason they are unable to make debt payments, there is a default, it is their collateral on the line. The city does not have to come in and pay, make these payments. It is their collateral on the line. That's, that's a very important point. So th there's no way that the city would be on the hook? No. Okay. We just want to make sorry, it clear. We, we just need to make it clear for the public <laughs> because there's fair questions. Yes. And, and the people that spoke here, I mean, those are all good questions that deserve answers. So. Thank you. Yeah, I'd rather defer to follow Perfect. on that answer. Uh, Juan Aguilera with his Camilla and Panic, and we, we serve as the, uh, the city's bond attorneys. Thank you for uh, being so here, Mr. Aguilera. No, no, I, my pleasure. And, and so that's a very good question. And, and so the, um, the, the, the way these things are, uh, the PIDs are structured, then, then the, uh, the, there's no moral or legal obligation of, of the city of Eagle Pass to make payment. 
on on the on the bonds if the bonds were ever into and going to default. So there is an assessment as, as Mr. Rodriguez was 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 talking about in, at, at the beginning, and uh, that that assessment then is 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 finalized and will be made and payments will be made over a period of years, of, you know, in some 30 years or so that, to make payments on that. If you do not make payment on your assessment, then there could be a lien that could be that could be assessed on your proper the property owners there for payment of that. Now the lien is subordinate to the lien that the city has on the taxes or the school district. So they, they would come in first to be able to collect right. their taxes on that property. And then afterwards, then the, uh, the, then the, uh, the, the, uh, the lien holders or the, the people that buy the bonds will be then uh, uh, obligated then to pay, to, to pay their, the, the assessments. But in, in, in a short answer, a mayor is, uh, there's, no, uh, there's no obligation morally or, or legally uh, for the uh, for the city to pay, make payment it's only and and the people that that buy the bonds know this up front they, they know this that they cannot come to the city for payment the only way they can be able to get payment is through the 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 assessment that is made and also it ultimately at some point if there's a default or they can't make a payment it's from the property owners that are just like you do with your taxes okay Thank you for, for clarifying that. Uh, the next bullet uh, is that the property owners within the PID, of course, we already discussed this, would pay the special fee to cover the cost of the improvements and or the payment of bond uh, principal and interest. This, if the council decides to move forward with the establishment of the PID, this does not authorize the issuance of debt. This establishes the PID. There's still some more steps that would need to take place in the future, but we, are, we would essentially just be creating the district itself. Um, going back to the other agenda item, so on, on agenda item number nine, we do have our third reading. Uh, it is on consent. Uh, we will be recommending that it be removed from consent, and it just has to do with the effective date. Um, there's some timeline things that we need to meet with regarding annexation, so that effective date would be uh, December 19th, 2023, or upon creation of the tax increment reinvestment zone, and we'll touch on that in a little bit. Uh, again, that item 12 is the actual uh, resolution creating the the PID, and then 15 is the finalization of the development agreement. So we do want to touch on the actual development agreement as well. So the development agreement is basically the rules that both parties have to follow, making all these things happen. So the, there's a section under annexation and zoning, and several of them were tackling at this meeting. Uh, so annexation and zoning, the, the developer is agreeing, of course, to annex the over 2,000 acres. The uh, de developer agrees to zone the property as per the concept plan. Uh, the previous meeting and executive session, we did discuss the plan. We had to, uh, by law, uh, zone it all industrial, but they will be required to come back and zone as per that map that they had proposed. Uh, under the section for public improvement district, of course, the city is agreeing to establish the PID. Under the section for PID bonds, the city will agree to issue the bonds on the, de uh, on the developer if the parties meet all the requirements of the agreement, that all the required documentation and reports are submitted, and of course, if it receives approval from the state. And, and sir, just to clarify as well, because it's been also all over the news, it's not the 400 million, Correct. it's 75, and again, the city is not committed to that. It's like the, the, the developers are asking for you know, a loan of that amount, and they're responsible for it. Correct. We're just backing in our word. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, with the 400 million, so the original petition did, uh, that the developers uh, did, did submit did contain a typo. At a previous council meeting that was brought up, uh, the council, uh, I don't know, they amended the petition with the correction. So that's all been, record-wise, that's all been corrected at previous meetings. Uh, we are not allowed to change their document. That, that's the way it was submitted. So unfortunately, that version still exists, but the council has already made that correction. Yes, correct. Not 400 million, it's up to 75 million. Uh, the other item of the development agreement uh, referencing the tax increment reinvestment zone. So there's no items on this agenda regarding the TERS itself, but we do want to discuss it because it's part of the development agreement. Uh, so the city is agreeing to establish a TERS over the entire property within 50 days after the execution of the development agreement, and the term is for 50 years or until the obligations are paid. And the term could be extended uh, if the parties agree. So 
let's get into what is a TERPS. Right? We talked about a PID, it's an additional fee that is used to pay that, the, the improvements, essentially. And the who pays that fee? I'm sorry? The, the fee is paid by the? And the fee is paid by the, the property owners within that okay. district. When it comes to the TERS. And again, in other words, just so to make it easier, I'm the buyer of a part of the 400 acres. I'm a buyer of a parcel of land, let's say lot A of A through Z, and I'm going to be disclosed prior to the sale that I'm going to be responsible for that piece to include another fee, I, like if it was a tax, but only to me, not to the city, not to the residents, not to anyone, county, school, city in general. Not anyone the, that lives outside of just that Just the area. person who's going to be buying in those 400 acres. Those that, funds are never like coming. Like an HOA. Like an HOA, correct. But let's put it, since it's all new, I know it's kind of, correct. we've been asking, and I promise you, we've been yes. asking legal, we've been asking <laughs> everyone so many times about everything because we want the city to be safe, but this is something that it's so new, but it happens in other, bigger, in, in other cities. Yes. But we understand. Yeah. Uh, so just to clarify, so I mean, remember right now, we are citizens as well. So. <laughs> so the situation right now is getting into you know the reality of how things are. Right. It is one group of property owners, and essentially we'd be assessing a fee for them to pay for their home. Right. But eventually the concept is that the land will be developed and it will be sold. So those that are buying the land, it is clearly disclosed when they purchase the land that there is an additional fee and how much that fee is. And that ties back into the church, right? Because <coughs> as an industrial commercial area, you know, it's to entice investment. We want investment to occur. We want businesses to come to develop. We want to create jobs. If a potential buyer comes in, sees that piece of land, sees that fee, it may deter them and make them try to go outside the limits, right, where we don't benefit. That's where the church comes in. Because the church is a specific zone created to finance costs that promote growth in the area. When improvements are made to an area, property values rise, leading to additional property tax, tax revenues. And those revenues can be used to cover certain costs. So once the streets, the, the, the water, the sewer are all put into that property, that property is now worth more. Once you build on it, it's worth more. So all taxing entities benefit from that, that improvement. So those additional tax dollars can be used for specific purposes. What is being proposed within the agreement is that 80% of that tax revenue that's coming into the city would then go back to buy down that fee. So the person who's coming in to buy the land basically has to pay their base taxes. It's to offset that additional fee. So that property is more enticing for a business, for an investor where they know that they don't have to pay that fee. The, the tax dollars that they will pay in the future will cover that fee. So I want to make sure that that, that concept, I know it's, there's a lot of moving parts, <laughs> uh, but essentially it is a tool to reduce that PID fee because as a business owner, you, you, know, you take those things into consideration, and if it is a substantial fee, it could deter you from deciding to buy that piece of property. So the additional tax dollars that they will pay, that the base tax dollars, the tax dollars that would have come to the city if they would have set up shop within city limits, would be used to reduce that fee. So in essence, rather than paying the standard tax for the city and the fee, they would just be paying the standard tax. Okay. okay. So, okay, so what are the, the next steps? <clears throat> Um, so today, we're, with the items that we discussed, on November 5th, uh, we would need to uh, have a council meeting a resolution uh, calling for the public hearing to establish the tax increment reinvestment zone. Uh, we do need to make a publication, and then on December 19th, we would have to hold a public hearing and then approve a resolution establishing the TERS, and that would also be the effective date of the annexation. So like I said, there's a lot of moving parts to this, and we really wanted to make sure we discussed everything. Now, if council has any questions, of course, you, uh, we can discuss those now. Uh, again, we can discuss them during the individual items. We wanted to give just an overview of everything being discussed today. This is a public hearing, and I think, Mr., if anybody has concerns, but I, I know Mr. Fuentes does, so please.
Once again, Mayor, distinguished council, people in attendance. Uh, the reason why I'm here is because uh, I, uh, I have to start with the story quickly, <laughs> if you'll allow me. For 25 years, uh, over 25 years, I've lived at my location. And uh, for those 25 years, I've seen the water in my backyard get as high from 24 to 36 inches. And uh, I've addressed it with almost every person that I know of in this community to try to fix that. And uh, today, uh, it, it hasn't been fixed. And uh, there's a street called Roosevelt Street that runs for about six to eight blocks. And it's below the standard of street level. It's about a 12 to 18 inch grade. The street is actually a drainage for that particular part. So when it rains, the people can't get out of their own houses. Uh, there's violations of easements everywhere you go. There's sidewalks missing. We're not ADA compliant. There's a lot of issues that the city has. And I just wonder, I just wonder how someone petitions in August and automatically it's here before you and you're ready to annex it. Uh, I'm concerned about that. Uh, I have a lot of respect for the Jonathan family, well-to-do family, for the Valdez family, for the Samora family. But instantaneously, they get a peti petition and now we're in the third reading of annexation when we have so many problems within our own community that we haven't even addressed. We want to go build infrastructure four miles away, four miles away, when we can't even take care of what we have within our city limits. And that's a concern of mine. And I'm pretty sure it's a concern of the regular folk around here. And it's the regular folk that voted for you guys to take care of them and their interests, not the wealthy people, the regular folk. They're the ones that are going to look at this and say, what's going on here? How could someone get such a fast response from city leaders? And that's my concern. How can someone get such a fast response from you? When I've been trying for 25 years to address drainage in my backyard. And I've seen some beautiful concepts, concepts for Eagle Pass, like connecting the parks, you know, paddling trails, uh, hiking trails, biking trails, uh, infrastructure within the city, revitalizing the river downtown area. Why can't we create, instead of a district improvement four miles away, why can't we develop a community block development district and go block by block and address the issues that will make this community a model city like Harlingen? like I used to live there, like McKellen. There's a lot of uh, things that we can do. There's a lot of examples out there that we can go after. And my concern is that I believe that we're making a mistake here because you don't want to create another entity within an existing entity because it's repetition of service. I mean, the Eagle Pass Water Works System is an amazing entity but it's separate on its own and it's duplication but it had existed for 75 years i am so proud of what they've done but now you want to create an extra entity that's another level of more organization and it's tough enough to provide the services with what you have right now i mean i've been to the museum and it says operating hours from this time to this time and nobody's there i've been to the arts culture center nobody's there when people are supposed to be there I've been to the library, and the library no longer opens beyond a certain time. So we can't provide the services, and now we want to grow four miles away when we can't provide services that are direly needed within our community. And not just my, my situation. I know the houses on Trinity Street and the Arroyo Project, and there's a lot of attention that our community needs. And I figured that our community money should be invested within our community. I believe this is a private equity investment. And there are a lot of private equity investors out there that would be willing to fund this. That's how a smart and intelligent council would proceed because I know there's going to be repercussions. Like the city manager was, or Mr. Jesse was saying, that uh, 
there's potential for a lot of stuff floating, <laughs> and we don't know what's coming. But I am concerned about the future, and I am concerned about the quality of life that we have in our community, and that we should be addressing that, because we want to take on more. And we want, we're already stressed out as we are with our current situation, and we want to take on more. Why? Who's going to benefit from this? You know, I, I think it's a great idea. I'm, I'm all for progress. But God, let's take care of the problems in the city first. If any of you have ever been on Roosevelt, I invite you to go and see the grade there. And know that when it's raining, it's bad. And that's just one street. And even in my area where I live, there's no sidewalks. <laughs> you know, there's no drainage. The streets, I mean, we pay gutter fees and, and drainage fees. There's no drainage. There's no gutters. The streets are the drainage. There's a lot of things we need to improve within our community before we go spending money on a private equity investment. And that's my opinion, and that's why I would ask you to consider investing more in what you have promised your constituents to make their life, their quality of life within the existing city limits better. And, and thank you for your time, and I appreciate it. Thank this. you. Uh, Ivan, maybe at the, the next meeting you can provide the community a list of all the streets that Public Works has repaired, all the, the flooding projects that, that we've done the last couple of years, and all the improvements in the City of Eagle Pass. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, so that was the conclusion of the, the presentation, so if there's any other questions. Yes. Anyone else in the public that wishes to be heard on this item? Council? Anyone in council have any comments? Or? Well, again, I, I just wanted to clarify about the 400 and the 2,000. Uh, the 2,000 will not be uh, developed, let's say, right away. We're just making sure as a city that it's annexed as well so that in the future, if it, it becomes a residential, commercial, any type of, of uh, zoning that it will be that we're working on it for the betterment of the community, that we can make sure that they pay taxes, city, you know, city taxes, so that we can continue with with improvements and uh, we can still gain out of it. So I mean, that's the reality. That that uh, I mean, the way of that we thought about it and that we wanted to just not only annex the 400, but we were considering the 2,000 because of that issue because the growth is getting there. We're not yet, I mean, we're actually negotiating, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, we are asking for um, a land donation as well for the future as well. It doesn't right. mean that we need it right away, but in the future to have at least a space for a fire department, maybe another, you know, uh, substation of the police, because yes, we understand that the more that it grows, we have to be ready. Uh, I think that people leaving, I mean, it's just an internal thing that we need to fix. Uh, I think we have the people and uh, we might be able to get more jobs in that area, but uh, we need to, to work on something else that it's totally separate. But otherwise, I mean, other than that, I think that uh, it's in the best interest of the city. I know there's a lot of questions. I, I, I myself made, I mean, had a lot of questions. But uh, we need to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Well, one of the, the a fact of the matter is that the city of Eagle Pass is growing. And right now, there's only so much land. We're kind of landlocked. You, you don't see any residential lots available, commercial lots. The city has to grow or else it can't just stop and then that's it. That's the city of Eagle Pass finishes. I understand we have to improve the city and we have been. I'm very proud of all the department's public works. Uh, fixing streets, putting sidewalks. They're not done yet. The, every year we invest a lot of money, millions of dollars in streets, sidewalks. They'll get to, to those streets. They have been. We'll provide <coughs> updates on what streets have been uh, paved, what sidewalks have been done, and we do. We try to do our best to let the public know. But we'll keep doing that. And we'll keep giving updates as to what streets are coming up. But the city has to grow, and we have to annex more land in order for us to keep that growth go going going forward. So it, and we promised I mean, to the public as well to be more, I guess, uh, to 
be more transparent, I guess, that that's what people need to hear and, and that they have questions and maybe we can be more uh, open. But we had too many questions just, you know, yet to really speak uh, to the public in general and really explain ourselves the correct way. We didn't want to make any mistakes. We wanted to be clear on the questions that we had, the same as every other resident. And, uh, and again, I mean, the risk is not in the city. It is in the developer. Why are we moving fast? Because the developer is taking the risk and they want to develop. So we usually don't say no to develop, to development and, and uh, to annex into the city. So, I mean, if there's any questions, I mean, we're open to, to discussion as well. And, you know, some of the concerns, you know, we, we do agree with, you know, when it comes to growing the city in terms of our boundaries a significant amount and be able to provide the services. You know, we need resources to provide those services. You know, that, you know, that goes without saying. Um, ideally, we would make more resources without taking anything off. But, you know, in reviewing what's planned, especially for the other taxing entities, we're looking at commercial industrial. When we are doing subdivisions, subdivisions tend to take on more resources, right? More people, mm -hmm. more resources are needed to cost more. Sure. When we're doing industrial and commercial, those tend to be more revenue generating. Right. And for entities like the school district or the, the hospital district that are not, you know, part of any of this agreement, that's just tax dollars. That's no more students, that's no, you know, that, that's additional revenue. You can use so tax money to provide. And that's why we agree because it's 400 acres and it's for industrial use. It's not residential use, it's industrial use. Correct. And so you know, I, this is, I guess, in terms of the type of development as ideal as we would like because it doesn't take on as much service. And when it comes to our service already, and we've had this discussion several times, the city does provide almost all services countywide, whether it be trash, whether it be fire. The, really the only main service we don't provide is police protection. So that's something that would need to be expanded to cover this area when it develops. But and again, just to make sure again, I mean the, the, the newspapers and, the, and the, I mean everyone else, it's think, I mean they think that we as a city are providing the improvements, that we're spending you know, the money for that and it's not correct, right? So the tax dollars that the citizens are paying are not cool. The developer is making it's sure to do everything. That's where the, I mean, the loan is coming from. Correct. So you might want to just specify how the PID funds will be utilized. So the, the PID funds have to be used on public improvements. So those are uh, roadways, wastewater, drainage, you know, what's traditionally a government uh, improvement there's a within state law there's allowable uses but it includes things like parks it uh, include things that are more economic development type uh, but and that's what the where the development agreement and state law really guide us right and, and, and you know in the discussions we've had with city council it's like well what's the vision for the area what do we want and so when we talked about the class a is that correct make the terminology correct class a type development for industrial you know it's the concrete roadways. It's, you know, things that will not take on a lot of burden. So what we're looking at is public infrastructure. You know, we're not building buildings for a business to operate. We're putting in the infrastructure necessary. And Other cities, the, like, I'm sorry, no, okay. like, like McAllen was, was mentioned, they have public improvement districts. It's widely used in Texas. It's, yeah, Laredo, McAllen, I mean, big cities. Dallas. If we don't want to keep being the small city, we have to start thinking outside the box. <laughs> And making sure again, we're getting back a, a return of 20% or so, right, of the 100% of the. So, so the city's gaining as well on the property taxes, correct? correct. And of course, any sales tax. So, right. just to recap, so right now it's outside city. So, if the developer said we're going to build, we would get nothing. nothing. So, in this case, yes, we would be returning some of the tax dollars that they generate, not, not tax dollars from other uh, citizens tax dollars that they generate. Um, but when it, when it comes down to it, you know, it really is what's council's view for the growth mm -hmm. of the city and what the development, we will, what we want it, the city to look like in the future. Because we are talking long term. Like I mentioned, it's a 50 year term. <coughs> the development won't occur tomorrow. It will occur in phases and hopefully, you know, it, it occurs rapidly because that's what we want to see. Since you mentioned that uh, the pit will be utilized basically for infrastructure, and we're extending the public infrastructure and basically growing the city's tax base, not only the cities, but the counties, the hospital districts, and the school districts. What I, I think that what's really of concern to 
the citizens as a whole is what is the burden on the local taxpayers? I know you've addressed this, but will you just restate that? Yes. So uh, the, the debt itself, the risk associated with those improvements, the cost of those improvements is not of the taxpayer. It is of the, the developers themselves. So at the end of the day, the developer is the one, like, Monique, miss, sorry, I was going to call yeah. by your first name, but okay. Council Woman <laughs> stated about, like, like, if you were to go to a, a financial institution and, and, you know, grab a loan, I mean, even though the bank also is holding the risk, but there's no risk for the city or the city taxpayers. Correct. Uh, the only time a, another party can come in is they decide to purchase property within the district, which will completely be disclosed right. at the time of purchase. And that's and, not even our you. responsibility. It's the developers. That's so. right, and the realtor. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. So how will this uh, impact our city revenues and what will be the cost of any to the city? So when uh, we're looking at the 20% once full build out, and that's where we really, uh, we don't have a set time frame for full build out, but the estimated uh, based on the appraisals, once it's fully built out, is about half a million dollars in just property tax alone. That's the 20%. Uh, that's based on the estimates. Uh, so it doesn't include sales tax <laughs> or any, any uh, indirect caused by job creation. Strictly property tax is about it's about half a million. Now, the, the great thing with the PID, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, per year. Per year, yeah. correct. Um, the great thing about the PID is that we're also, we can also use funding collected by the PID for maintenance purposes. So rather than city public works having to go in, uh, in, in to make repairs on public infrastructure for a period of time, we're able to use PID funds. So definitely in the short term, we don't see any significant cost. Uh, we're hoping it builds out pretty quick so that we can collect that extra tax revenue. And everything will, else works, they're saying maintenance bonds, rating, and everything else in the process. They have to comply with all okay. city code, city ordinances. <clears throat> okay. Well, this, this is a public hearing, so Any at this other time. Questions? No, time. What, was, what is it exactly, what is backing the bonds? So in, what backs the bonds that will be issued? So the land is put as collateral. So uh, when it comes to the actual structure, um, mm -hmm. the, the way this is planned on being tackled is in terms of reimbursement bonds. Right. So the infrastructure will, you want to answer the question? Sorry, <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't hear the, the question. What exactly is, uh, what backs the bonds? I mean, what, what backs what, the bonds? Mm -hmm. So again, as, as there's, uh, the, the city will issue what is called a special assessment revenue bonds. Mm -hmm. And, and the, uh, the people, as I mentioned, the people that buy the bonds, they, they know because all the documents will be presented or, or, pre or prepared and say that they can only look at the, at the assessments from, from the property. Right. And the tax of that is on, in that area. They cannot come in to this area over here and collect some of those taxes or, or the, the, the only, the, the security for, for the bonds is, is only the, the property and the assessments that are going to be collected from there. The annual assessments. The assessments, yeah. So okay. that, so, so there is no, there's no, not going to be any kind of, uh, uh, again, like I, I mentioned, I guess that's important. There, there's no obligation on the city. If, if for some reason the, the, the bonds go into default, they cannot come to you and say, can you raise your taxes right. so that you can be able to pay the, the debt that was over here? They cannot do that. And as a matter of fact, as I mentioned, the taxes that you, the city, will have on the 20% and the, the taxes that the school district has and the county has, that has priority over the taxes, over the, the, right. the security or, or the lien that, the, that the, the, the lien holders will have on that property. So they do have a, a first lien on, on, on the property, but, but the, the, it's, it's subordinate to the lien that the, the, the tax entities have over there. So again, um, we, we see some PIDs uh, growing up in, in areas because it, 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 it promotes a fast development right. in some areas. Uh, the city wouldn't have to go through the expense of putting in water and sewer and, uh, and, then, and then see the development start growing, uh, which, which, which is, you know, if, if I'm gonna buy some property, I wanna make sure I have streets or water and sewer. So the, uh, the PIDs are created and the assessments then pay for that area and, and it's good because only that area pays right. for what they in san antonio for example they also have a pid 
in in the in the city uh, within the city downtown area, and so you see sometimes people walking around directing people where to go, and there's some improvements that are made to the streets in that area. It's only the the PID the people within that area that that pay for those expenses. I don't since I live in the northern side of San Antonio. So again, it's it's a development that will be made, but it's it's going to be paid. And, and the, 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 the people, the lien holders, the people that, that loan the money can only go to the assessment, assessments collected to pay. That's the only, that's the only way they, and they, and they know that up front. They, mm -hmm. that, they, and the, these are very sophisticated mm -hmm. investors and they know what they're doing. And of course, you know, they will want their interest, pay, you know, of course. certain interest paid on, on for taking a, a risk, but that, that's the way these things are created. Now, like the the cost that the city incurs, like for I mean, utilization of staff, legal consultants, engineers, and all of that is going. Those additional costs will be reimbursed by the bond proceeds. Is that correct? That the responsibility of the developer to pay. Yeah. Correct. So and the re the re reimbursement, reimbursement. The, through the reimbursement, I just want to make sure that everyone understands that because it is going to take city personnel to do stuff, and we don't want to be footing that bill. Right. I'm, you know, I just yeah. want to make sure that the yeah. construction. As well as, I mean, will the developer will have like a cash escrow account to back the, the sale of the bonds? The developer has to, yeah, so like our consultant fees, everything would come out of that. Okay. That's separate fund. Yeah, because I didn't developer. see it anywhere in, in your presentation, and I want to make sure that everyone understands because, I mean, it's not all just this. That's correct. <clears throat> I mean, because we want to make sure that all of this is contracted because you might have a third party that will administer some of the requirements of the contract. Yes. And I want to make sure, that, I mean, because if you don't have those assessments already identified in your agreement, you cannot go back and modify it later. So I want to make sure that we have all these safeguards. I mean, that's what we're here to do. And I mean, yes. we're not against anything, of but course. the thing is we just want to make sure that we safeguard our community. Yes. Um, and the point I was going to get to was um, the reimbursement uh, pit bond. So originally what was proposed was a construction PID bond where the, the bonds would be issued and the construction done. So the developer is responsible for putting in the infrastructure and then the bond will be issued for right. the reimbursement. So as an investor, the improvements are there. You know, so the property is already secure, worth more, more likely to develop. Right? So they don't have to, you know, I think like when you, if you try to get a construction mortgage, right, it's more difficult because there's no actual building there. Same kind of concept. So in this case, not doing construction uh, bonds, but it's a uh, reimbursement pit bonds. And that's so why they loan it so high. All right. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah, sorry. Can you bring up your slide on the terse? I, I just want you to rehash a little bit about all the 20% and all of that stuff, because I don't think it was very clear to most people. So, yes. So. Just to read the slide all over again. So the TERS is, the TERS will be, would be created over the entire 2,000 plus mm -hmm. acres. Um, so it's the, that specific zone uh, would be created to finance costs and promote growth in the area. When improvements are made to the area, property values rise leading to additional property taxes. So as soon as buildings go up, more tax dollars would be collected by the city. 80% of those tax dollars would go back to buy down that pit fee. Uh, so that in, it's more enticing to the prospective buyers to <coughs> develop within this district. Um, which it's, a, it's an economic development tool to spur development because we do not want them to go outside of our boundaries. Um, so 80% would be to cover the special assessment. Um, yes, and so the 20% would be for city use. It would, for just general government use. But the 80% you're referencing to is the spread of between the initial value and then the new value or? Correct, so we, we determine a baseline. Uh, that baseline is set based on the property value of those 400 plus acres and then add the value in addition to that. That's the, 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 the range, that's the value that we're looking at when determining that cost. <coughs> Right now, it's undeveloped land. Uh, so, I mean, that's what I'm saying. In, in reference to the value of undeveloped land to the baseline, where are we? I mean, where, that's a big disparity. So, the baseline would be what the value is now. Now. So, let's say it's uh, 10 million, and then we end up in 100. We're going to be paid the 20% of the difference of the 10 
and the hundred, correct? They would based be based on the percent of that. that okay. Demand, yes. And that uh, is applicable for how long? Bless you. I'm sorry? And that is ap that terse is applicable for how long? So it would exist for 50 years or until the final debt payment is issued, the final obligations? So can it be less or can it, would, or it can even be more? Or is it at least 50 years? It's no, at least top. 50 years. It can be less, right? Okay. If it's agreeable amongst the parties, yes. And it's just for those acres? In question. Of course, yes. With the 2,000 plus acres. Let me ask you another question, and I'm sorry that I'm asking a lot, but I mean, um, say we approve some of these items on here. Have you already identified all the terms of the terms? Because I think some of that that is being presented is actually very negotiable. Oh, it is. Yes. And I'm not. I'm. I'm personally not comfortable with what's outlined. So there is no items on the TERS, it's strictly just related to the PID. That's still to be, we still have to have the public hearing and, and do that resolution. So, and those terms are part of the development agreement and it's something that we've been going back and forth with, uh, with, with the developer. So part of the action item for the development agreement is not to uh, accept it as is, we are gonna finalize negotiations and then uh, execute the agreement. So that's the action item related to that. So there's nothing related to the terms yet. If there are additional items that the council wishes for us to, to focus on, um, we still have time to discuss those. Uh, like I said, we it's not until December 19th, I think, mm -hmm. right. that would go into I think it would be all the specific terms of the terms. Mm -hmm. like and, and that's yes. like my concern, like, well, I mean, what happens, I mean, because I, I want to be fair to all parties, the investors and everyone, you know. What happens if we go forward with this today on what's being presented on our agenda? And we don't come to terms with the terms. What happens? I mean, you know, I don't want them, yeah, you know, losing too. time. And I mean, I understand it's an investment, time and money. You know, it's, I get it. You know what I mean? It's, I'm not clueless to the finances, but I mean, I need, we need to be fair to all parties, and we are responsible, our fiduciary duties to the citizens of Eagle Pass. And that's what my concern is. I mean, what if we come back with a, a terms that is not in the best interest of the city? So within the development agreement, it does say that we would establish the terms, and if we do not come with our with our sections of the agreement then the developer does not so they would have the option to de-annex it so basically it would become okay. void. yeah I mean I want to have safeguards for them as well because it's Correct. only fair like I said to both to all parties involved I mean do you have any I mean I mean I know it's not on here or anything like that but I mean we haven't seen anything presented to council like any preliminary terms agreement oh. Are you all okay with we, we closing it? Unless you have additional. Okay, we'll go, go ahead and close the public hearing at 6:40 p.m. We should probably uh, skip the 12, right? Which is also related to this. You might want to give me a time limit here. That's <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, th those are all fair, just questions, so that the public can know what's right. going on. So we'll, we'll, we'll move on to uh, the related. Uh, item is item 12 consideration and possible approval of a resolution of the city council of the city of eagle pass texas authorizing and creating the city of eagle pass public improvement district one as described in exhibit a in accordance with chapter 372 of the texas local government code providing for related <laughs> matters and providing an effective date Excuse me. so this would be a just uh, creating the PID, right? Not coming into terms on the TERS, anything like that. Correct. Just to be clear. And there's no right. Coming in the bonds or anything. Right. So at this and time. This is just a, a one time reading, or is this going to come back up? I'm sorry. I'm a, <laughs> no, it's, it's a resolution. It's, okay. it's a resolution. Mm -hmm. this, I'll entertain a motion on this item. I want to make a motion to move. Okay. We have a motion to approve by Councilman Garcia. Second. Uh, I'll second. Second by Councilwoman Cruz. Discussion? All in favor? I'm yes. just going, I'm going to abstain. We have three in favor, and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Davis abstains. Councilman Davis, this is a resolution. Do you have a copy? I don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't have a lot of the information. Yes. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, we'll go ahead and go to back to item number two, public hearing and recommendation on the proposed preliminary replat of lot 54 and block one of El Pueblo Nuevo subdivision. We'll open this public hearing at 6.42 p.m. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. Good evening. So what you have before you is a uh, replat application uh, submitted by um, Dirksen Engineering, owner being Guadalupe Guanajuato, and the location being 274 Pueblo Nuevo Drive, located in El Pueblo Nuevo subdivision, located in the ETJ. <clears throat> the request here is uh, that the prelim preliminary replat approval to subdivide an approximate <coughs> 0 0.3260 acre tract into two residential lots, and this is to allow for the owner to install property, uh, proper city utilities and improvements before uh, going into and request a, a final plat application and before plat recordation. Parcel size is 14,250 square feet. Here you have some uh, <coughs> photos, Sorry. an aerial photo of the site and some site or street view <coughs> of the property. You have an existing uh, double white home in the, uh, on I, I the property. I think we're having a hard time hearing. If you could speak in the mic, please. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Here you have uh, street views, street view photos of the actual. As you can see here on this photo, it's, that's the remainder of the lot. So that's what they're subdividing. Okay. Here you have a plat zoomed in of the proposed replat. We did send out 65 notices to the abutting property owners and we received five letters uh, as undeliverable. Uh, so the recommendation from the com uh, from uh, from the Planning and Zoning Commission is that the City of the Eagle Pass City Council grant preliminary plat approval of the proposed replat of Lot 54 in Block 1 of the El Pueblo Nuevo Subdivision LTD, subject to the plat complying with the provisions of Article 3 of City of Eagle Pass Code of Ordinances, Chapter 23, Governing Procedures and Specifications for applying no plats. Okay. Uh, this is a, a report. Thank you for the recommendation. This is a public hearing. Do we have anyone in the pub public that wishes to be heard? If not, we'll close the public <coughs> hearing at 6.44 p.m. and I'll entertain a motion at this time, either to uh, approve or, or not approve of this recommendation. Council? Approve. Okay. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve by Councilman Garcia. <laughs> second by? Oh, I'll second. That's fine. But Mayor Pro Tem <laughs> Davis, discussion, all in favor? I will have to abstain to avoid any conflict. Okay, we have three in favor and then the an abstention by <coughs> So it passes. Item three, public hearing, an introductory ordinance of the request submitted by Pedro Garza for the rezoning of lot three and block 11 <coughs> of Hillcrest Edition, also known as 1260 Rio Grande Street, from R3 Duplex District to R3A Apartment District, closing of public hearing and possible action. This public hearing is open at 6.45 p.m. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, again, this is a, a, a <clears throat> rezone application submitted by uh, the property owner, Mr. Pedro Garza, property being located at 1260 Rio Grande Street. Uh, <clears throat> the request here is to rezone the parcel from R3 Duplex District to R3A Apartment District to allow for the construction of apartments. As of today, we don't, we have a, we don't have a site plan. Um, of, they've been advised that they have to comply with our building codes fire codes and, and so forth, or state codes as well. Uh, the current use is single family dwelling. There's an existing residence. Uh, again, the proposed use would be multi-family dwelling, parcel size being 7,500 square feet. And the current zoning again is R3 duplex district. The master plan shows a, a parcel as residential and the site is, is, is located uh, in an area compromised of single family dwellings and also multi family dwellings. Access to the lot is provided by Rio Grande, and here you have some uh, photos of the subject property. As you can see here on this screen, um, <clears throat> this slide, there's additional uh, apartments in the vicinity. 
here, this here is the sure. subject property. These are multifamily, these two, and these two. That's just a general plot plan. Uh, it hasn't been approved, it's just a preliminary. So you have an idea of what they're proposing to build. <coughs> uh, how many apartments is that? Mm -hmm. It's a total the, of four. Four? Mm -hmm. Okay. So right but now course, right now it's zoned just for a duplex, yes. but they want to do four. Yes. Here you have the uh, master plan, which depicts the parcel as uh, residential and our district zoning, our zoning map it depicts it as a, a duplex dwelling. We sent out uh, 24 notices to the abutting property owners and we only received one uh, stating that uh, they no longer uh, own the property. So no objections. So that concludes the report, and uh, the recommendation is that City Council prepare and adopt an ordinance granting a zoning district change from R3 dist duplex district to R3A apartment district for a property legally known as 1260 Rio Grande Street. And that concludes the report. Thank you. Yes. Anybody have any comments on this item? If not, we'll go ahead and... No. I was trying to figure out the location. Sorry, I okay. got a little bit lost along the way. He's helping me here. I apologize. But no, it's because they're like they're leveling that property to. Is it, are they leveling like that those structures to do it there? More likely, they're, it's going to be a demo. Right. right. Yeah. right. So I mean, that's what I was trying to figure out. Yeah. It'll no, you know. be new construction. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's what I was telling him. Yeah. I said, wait, did I over? Did I like omit something or what? That <laughs> where is the lot that she's talking about? Okay. No, no. Sorry. Gonna, it's going to be a, a demo. I was trying to follow you and read, but. I was handed that I didn't have from before, so on item 12, so I apologize. No you're good, you're good. With that said, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing mm -hmm. at 6.49 p.m. and I'll entertain a motion on this item. So moved. We have a motion to approve the recommendation by Councilwoman Cruz, second by Councilman Garcia. Discussion, all in favor, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. The next items that we have are on the consent agenda. It's items four through ten however item number nine that's going to be pulled out so we can discuss that one individually so not including item nine does anyone want to pull any other item from four through ten if not i'll entertain a motion to uh, to so approve we'll those items we have a motion by councilman cruz second by councilman garcia all in favor unanimous we'll go straight to nine this is going to be a long one <laughs> Happy get ready. Reading. Happy reading. <laughs> Drink a little water. Your reading okay. teacher is going to be proud of this. I know, right? Ms. Riojas, sickle mind somewhere. <laughs> Item 9, third and final reading of an ordinance providing for the extension of certain boundary limits of the city of Eagle Pass, Texas, and the annexation of certain territory lying at Jason 2 and adjoining the present boundary limits of said city consisting of tracks consisting of approximately 2,148.58 acres of land lying and situated in Maverick County, Texas, consisting of 1322.07 acres composed of 552.19 in SS Sanders Survey 24, abstract 824, 554.84 acres in SS Sanders Survey 25, abstract 825, and 215.06 in SS Sanders Survey 26, Abstract 826, Maverick County, Texas, and part of 1,357.09 acres described as Exhibit A in conveyance to Bayer Junfen et al., recorded in document number 2113541 of Maverick County Official Public Records, Maverick County, Texas, being 416.44 acres composed of 58.64 acres in SS Sanders Survey 25, Abstract 825 and 379.37 acres in SS Sanders Survey 26, Abstract 826, Maverick County, Texas, and part of a 160.95 acres tract described as Exhibit B in conveyance to Bayer Junfen et al. recorded in document number 211 3541 of Maverick <coughs> County official public records, Maverick County, Texas, being 297.98 
acres composed of 185.45 acres in Antonio Sanchez survey 512 abstract 1170. 80.96 acres in SS Sanders survey 25 abstract 826 Maverick County, Texas and out of a 314.63 acres tract described as exhibit C in conveyance to Bayer Jenfin et al. Recorded in document number 211-3541 of Maverick County official public records, Maverick County, Texas being 112.09 acres composed of 34.57 acres in SS Sanders Survey 24, abstract 824, and 77.52 acres in SS Sanders Survey 25, abstract 825, Maverick County, Texas, and part of 136.52 acres described as Exhibit D, in conveyance to Bayer Jenfin et al., recorded in document number 211-3541 of Maverick County official public records, Maverick County, finding, Maverick County, finding that the meeting at which this ordinance is passed is open to the public, as required by law, providing a severability clause and establishing an effective date. This is a third uh, and final reading. Yes, sir. as we discussed, um, the change on here has to do with the effective date in order to comply with the proposed development agreement. Uh, we do legally have 90 days from the first reading to finalize the annexation. That would be December 19th. So we're recommending that the effective date be December 19th or upon the approval of the tax increment in the investment zone for the TERS. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve this third and final reading with the clause just read by Mr. Mm -hmm. Rodriguez? Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve by Councilman Garcia. I'll second. Second by Councilwoman Cruz. Discussion? <coughs> we'll take a vote. All in favor? Unanimous. Item 11. Second reading of an ordinance amending Chapter 7, Bicycles, Article 2, Section 7-16 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Eagle Pass, Texas by allowing the operation of motor-assisted scooters by a person 14 years of age or older on sidewalks or on streets with a speed limit of 35 miles per hour or less, establishing a fine, finding that the meeting at which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law, providing a severability clause and establishing an effective date. Mr. Madera. So not much to update here, right. just we're available via questions. Yeah, well, this is a, the second reading of an ordinance. We needed this ordinance, like we talked about, because of the more common use. So, Counselor? Yes, so we did uh, make the change that y'all requested last time of changing the age to 14, but we made a provision saying that from ages 14 to 18, you must ride on the sidewalk. Okay. Above 18, then, if you're on a street that the speed limit is under 35 miles per hour, then you can ride on the street, which we always recommend you ride on the sidewalk, but um, for this ordinance, we made that provision 14 through 18, you must ride on the sidewalk. That, what sound, that sounds reasonable. Mm -hmm. What about, I, I'm going to say private property, but like, and the only reason I'm saying this is because I saw some people riding it in the mall. And the only reason I know is because they cut right in front of me. I was dropping up my son, you know, at, at a work, and it was just like, and I was just like, wow, we're just addressing this like perfect time to happen. But I mean, I'm glad I was paying attention. But it, I mean, it scared me to be honest with you, and that's—I don't know if that's anywhere in here. So or that's a private property, and they, have, they can make their own rules. And so we're we're just okay. Right. Yeah, it just worried me because of some. I couldn't tell the age. I mean, everyone looks like a teenager that's uh, probably under twenty-one. You know, so it's just like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, it was someone really young, and I was just like, man, this—it's sort of like just they popped out of nowhere. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. okay. okay. Anyone want to make a motion? Second. Second I'll make reading. a motion. We have a motion to approve by Councilwoman Cruz, second by Councilman Garcia. Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. 13. Consideration of possible approval of a resolution of the City Council of the City of Eagle Pass authorizing the use of competitive sealed proposals for the construction of a new gymnasium. Yes, Mayor Council. As Council's aware, we've, we've been working on this project to reconstruct the gymnasium at the former Boys and Girls Club. Um, so this just basically authorizes us to use the RFP process to to hire the, the contractor for for the project Right, and once you get those those people that bid on it, it'll come to us, right? Yes, okay So moved. So we have a motion to approve by Councilman Cruz mm -hmm. and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Davis discussion all in favor unanimous 14 consider uh, confirmation of said Garza by City Council 
of Civil Service Commission Appointee per Civil Service Act, Section 143.006B. So do we have a motion to confirm Mr. Seth Garza to this commission? So we have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Davis, second by Council Councilman <laughs> Garcia. <laughs> Unless I'm sorry, I'm I was reading it. Okay. Um, <coughs> just want to make a comment, uh, and uh, anybody that's going to be on, on our commission, uh, that they be neutral on everything that they do. That's the only thing I want to make and put out there. Um, it's for the best interest of our employees, and, uh, you know, just make sure that they always are neutral when it comes to making the right decision that will benefit our staff and the city. Absolutely. Just want to put out that out there, and other than that, I do second, Mr. Davis. That that is fair. So we we, we have a motion and a and a second by Councilman Garcia. Discussion. All in favor? Unanimous. I know that Mr. Garza has been wanting to serve the community and an aspect of a board, so mm -hmm. we'll welcome him, him to this one. Fifteen. Authorizing interim city manager to execute a development agreement between the city of Eagle Pass and Sonia Junfen, Bayer Junfen, Linda Zamora, and Sergio Zamora to develop approximately 461 acres of real property. Mayor Council, um, so we're, what we're recommending here is to authorize the city manager to finalize the negotiations for the development agreement and execute the agreement. Conversely, if the council would like us to bring this back, we could just continue off the uh, negotiations and then bring it back for final approval. I think that I'm amenable to that. Go ahead and negotiate and then bring it back for final approval. Yes. No, and I'll make a motion to that. We have a motion to that effect <clears throat> by Mayor Pro Tem Davis and a second by Councilwoman Cruz. Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. 16, consideration on possible approval of the master plan of Rio Grande State Subdivision. Mayor Council, thank you. So this item um, is part of a phase subdivision, so we're bringing before you the master plan recommendation for that. It is uh, the Rio Grande Estates, which is a development off of North Veterans or Veterans Pastel Road Boulevard as you're going further uh, towards the hill down the river. Thank you, Shayla. The consultants are the bottom The applicant here is Leak Engineers LLC on behalf of Margon Developers of USA Corporation. It's 55.69 <laughs> acres, and uh, the intent is for it to be residential subdivisions. And there's public utilities in the area which would be extended into this new subdivision when developed. This shows the master plan. Uh, there's three phases shown in the in the gray towards the top of the screen there. They want to uh, work on phase two, which is primarily this Rio Sabinas at the bottom, and then which turns uh, goes towards the top of the screen, Rio San Antonio Drive, and then the Lots above that would be a part of a future phase. One thing that was depicted on this version is uh, at the top, and it's fairly faint. Uh, it's really not, uh, not visible here, but there was um, parkland proposed in this top section, which would be the, the section between these lots and the, and the river. Um, the Parks Department has reviewed that. We have about seven acres very nearby as part of the Hunter Park Bass Subdivision Development, mm -hmm. as well as some potential um, parkland as part of NGA subdivision. Again, all within a very close proximity mm -hmm. here. So they did not feel it was to the benefit of the city to accept more in this area due to the maintenance costs and uh, kind of mobilization needs to be moving from park to park to, to right. do maintenance. So um, it, it was shown in part of the plans, but we're currently not uh, we have advised the applicant we're not planning to accept parkland dedication as, as part of this development. Where was the, the parkland, I'm sorry? Just out of curiosity. It would be to the top, top section here across and... Uh, because they also have the next item, right? And then the next item is the phase two uh, of this, de this so development. So you're advising them that we, we're not, we don't want to accept? Parkland. Not the land, they want the fee. That's correct. So it's either parkland or park land fee in lieu. <laughs> yeah, so in this case, we would, bad, right? we would accept mm -hmm. the fee in lieu. Um, 
Can, can we have an of idea of the, of the fee, more or less? Uh, it's at eleven fifty per lot, and then for this, uh, I believe it's fifty. Um, I think we're somewhere in the fifty. Let me let me pull up the next document here. It is uh, fifty-eight residential lots, so we're looking at somewhere in the sixty, 65, seventy, yeah. sixty-five thousand dollars. So it's not a very large amount with our fee in lieu. We're still in that process of. Uh, looking at our parkland fee ordinance but uh, that's what it be, would be for this one okay. what so was it taken in consideration i mean just i know that i said it in the air because i had the opportunity to to be present in one of the the the, the presentations and, and the meeting mm -hmm. um my suggestion was because it, it's part it's in the flood zone so that's, I mean, what I, that's on the next item right so that it, was my question oh, okay also. but the thing is that i I mean, to me, it makes sense because they're all communicated. So let's say that you have a track, or, I mean, a, a track, a walking uh, trail. yeah, a walking trail, or you have a bicycle trail or anything like that. It just makes sense because you go around that area and it's just safe and it gets the continuation of everything. And it just, you know, I think it was a pretty uh, much like a good idea. But I also suggested, well, if it's the problem of the of the flood, which still in flowers we have, you know. A park <laughs> there uh, which is a retaining pond but still it, it right. you know it's used for that uh, maybe the suggestion of tennis courts or basketball courts because they were also worried about the safety because it's just across the river exactly. so I said it's gated we can have you know something that it's taken I mean it's just another idea right. so I mean just to, to put it on the table to see if we're still a hundred percent sure about money against I agree. I actually agree. But I mean, uh, you, Parks knows more about the maintenance, you know, costs. So I mean, I'm I'm open to to. We we're hear trying all those. to look at some different, um, <coughs> different ways to possibly take Parkland. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. Can... I mean, and the reason, and I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback on your saying. I'm glad you're saying it because that's where I was waiting, and that's why I kept flipping through my. Not everything here. has to be parks. Right. right. It doesn't have to be a know, park where we you can have do so many other stuff, things. But, yeah, but because I was seeing that there's some areas that are in the, and that was also one of my concerns, but then it's also a question of, well, let's be creative with that flood zone. And if you are along the riverbanks, I just don't know what kind of access there is, but I mean, you can always have some kind of area where if people want to fish or anything else that you use nature. Exactly. I mean, I we can be creative. people mentioned boat ramps, <laughs> <trips, laughs> but yeah, I mean, there could be like a nature trail that's along the river's edge. Or decks, I mean, like we discussed in the Shelby before, right. and, you know, so I mean, things that are in a smaller I mean, scale. I don't know, since it's, that's why I asked about the two developments, because if they would be maybe amenable, okay, we don't take it from this actual part. So I don't know if that's doable. But I don't, it, was, I, it was how many acres? Because, I mean, I remember the owner was excited about, it was a lot of acreage. Right, I mean, because that's what I'm saying, if we could take the part, the land from this one, but not necessarily where they're, there where it is maybe apply it to the other development. I don't know if that's doable. I mean, because it's the same. Development. Since they're in the design, that's what, to me, in my mind, it makes sense that we can already design something as a whole with all three that's in a row. Right. But yeah, sure I know. So I'm talking and talking, but yes. So, so those comments, they're all valid comments, right? So, but that brings to mind three park principles that we're taught. So the, the first one is that uh, we, every park professional is really taught that a park is supposed to be within 10 minute walking distance of a neighborhood, right? So in this case, once we take park land in there, you're basically flooding a whole a wide area with multiple parks within 10 minute walking distance. Right. And there's still other areas that, that need parks, right? Uh, so that's just one concept that comes to mind that we would be flooding mm -hmm. there with multiple parks. Number two is uh, the rising cost of development of parks. As you'll see with Yellow Med Park, from what we got to where we are now, mm -hmm. co development costs are just skyrocketing. That park is over up, up, over to about 850,000 already, uh, just for that acre of land. Uh, it's 1.45 acres, and that's just the center cost of parks. We're hearing that in other cities, <coughs> minimal parks are costing development 1.5 million. So there are rising costs in development when it comes to parks. The third principle is that when you get into a subdivision and you start developing basketball courts, tennis courts, that nature, now you start falling in that subdivision with unwanted guests in a way, right? So people are kind of falling in that neighborhood. As you see, like if you drive by Hanoke, they have parks, since we do like a little bit of green space, that area is flooded by football type football exactly. teams. So that's just one thing to keep in mind that once you build up, you might have that problem where now the neighbors 
are flooded by guests from other subdivisions just coming to use tennis courts, basketball courts, and so on. But those are just three concepts that immediately came to mind when we had those thoughts. Okay. okay. Thank you. A couple of other um, comments. A lot of good points were brought up. So the area is not developable. Uh, developable. The applicant, the engineer record, did um, you know, clarify that's floodplain area, so it can't can't be used for more sub more homes. Right. Uh, so if we could come up with, and we were we we're still open to that, we we're trying to figure out a good way to use it, maybe a more natural uh, park sure. land area, like like you have brought up where it wouldn't be as much maintenance, because I think that was one of the concerns from the park side. Uh, so we were trying to figure out a way, and it's still open to it, potentially, like for the third nice phase. Mm -hmm. Things that public works can do, yeah. exactly. something natural. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure if you want us to we look at it a little bit further for this phase two, uh, in terms of taking the land versus the cash in lieu. Uh, another thing we were thinking was, was um, possibly applying it to the phase three when they get to that, which they said they, they're looking to do this as fast as possible and then move on to phase three. If we can lump it together in the phase three area, might be, that would be the river area, right? I, I think if, if you could look at it a little more to see if there's... If it's, if I mean, if we doable, can advance if and, and, and keep forward, moving yeah, forward yeah. with the, with the plants and everything and just leaving that for later, can, can it be? I mean, just the, the decision whether it's going to be a parkland fee or the... So for this Donation. particular item, we're looking at the, the general Devil. master plan of what they have in mind, and we, we do agree with this general plan, uh, and we can, I guess, just condition that we will uh, research the parkland a little bit further before finalizing this, if that's the wishes. Yeah, the wish of the I think we can do that, approve the master plan with that condition. Correct. Because I think we agree with it either way, yeah. whether, it's, whether we do or don't, so we can just add that, settle that, and move forward with it. If, if, Sure. Do you want to approve it that way? Yeah. Does anyone want to make a motion to so that? Yeah, I'll motion. second. By Mayor Pro Tem Davis, a second by Councilwoman Cruz. All in favor? Unanimous. <coughs> 17 is consideration and possible action on the on the preliminary plat approval of Rio Grande Estates Subdivision Unit 2. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so this one again has ties with the master plan we just discussed. Again, the applicant is leak engineers and on behalf of Margon developers. This is 15.26 um, acres, and they do plan to uh, construct 58 residential lots as part of this phase two. Uh, as discussed, it's residential, specifically R2, second one family dwelling district that the, the zoning is intended to be. And again, utilities will be extended to these new, this new area. This is a vicinity showing where we're at. Here is the plat drawing. And again, it's primarily this, this uh, section here. This would be the, to the west, put it down the river. Uh, it's on the west side. side. And so this area here, in between the pond area, is some of the parkland that was being, that we just discussed. There's a little bit closer view of that. Um, as you can see here, there is primarily R2, that um, orangish color mm -hmm. around R2. So this is the same zoning as what's already around and being developed around. Uh, the, the recommendation here, and I do want to just point out this part. So this is Veterans Boulevard, where it continues past from Del Rio Highway, and then it curves, and then this, this part is essentially becoming more parallel with the river, with the river being here to the left of the uh, outside of the screen here. But as you can see, it does not connect at this point. Um, that is part of, for economic purposes, as part of this number of lots, uh, the applicant stated it's just not, not really feasible to complete that whole section with this phase, but plans to do it with a third phase. Uh, we have done that in a similar, in another subdivision where we, we gave uh, conditional approval on that, so we're recommending to do the same thing here. And so the recommendation from the Department and Planning and Zoning Commission is to grant the subdivision variance request to allow the subsequent con construction of the 1,320 linear feet of finished street upon Veterans Boulevard, grant the preliminary plat approval of Rio Grande States Unit 2, 
subject to them complying with uh, all code ordinances, chapter 23 procedures and specifications for final plats. And the condition that I mentioned is that, uh, that the applicant, the developer, dedicate, design, and construct the remaining portion of the North Veterans Boulevard to Rio Sabinas upon the development of phase two of the subdivision. I apologize, just state phase three. This is phase two. So Correct. upon development of phase three, or three years after the sale of 80% of the units included in phase two, which is this current phase, whichever comes first, this is the same language that we used with the previous development, so we're being consistent with, yeah. with that. It should just be that change, right? Phase three and then phase mm -hmm. two. The two should be three and one should be two. Yes, I apologize about that. Any questions? I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. By with that change mentioned. With, with, by Councilwoman Cruz and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Davis. I was discussion? Ask, yeah. Discussion? Do you have like an overlap of the two developments? Like, because there are they, they're. Because there was that one, and I'm trying to figure out what. So these are the, the existing areas, like Lemonwood. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm also. So if you keep going further, you can see a little bit of the river there at the top of the screen. And so the first one you would get to is this Rio Sabina. So this kind of a L shape. That's one, and then the other one that the little What's left? kidney shape is the other one. That's right, exactly. Um, I'm really thinking out of the box here, but do you know what, I mean, I know, I know, I know you probably don't, okay, but <laughs> I'm gonna just say it anyways. What is the perimeter around both of them? And the reason I'm asking you, because what if we were to take the parkland and take it in the easements, maybe behind, and have like a bike trail around? Because we don't have bike trails, or big walking trails that are natural in, I don't know. Just trying to think of something different that's not going to cost. I know it might be a little bit of maintenance stuff, sorry, y'all, but I mean, you know. You're so saying we don't have to put swings everywhere, you know? We, we could look into what, what that would be for this. I mean, one. see if it's actually doable or conducive to, you know? I mean, because I remember a lot of the stuff that came through with the park's master plan and all that stuff. But I mean, you know, when we have a chance, I mean, it could actually be like a nice walk, you know, to walk out of if you live in that area. I know they don't want everyone visiting from that area, but people are going to visit anywhere. <laughs> But you know what, it might be a nice exercise. I mean, where you have the Mayor's Fitness Council promoting all kinds of fitness, which I probably need to get in part of myself. But I mean, you know what I mean? It would be nice to have that type of a walk, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. So uh, the concept was what we did want from here is a way how to connect this area to Hunter Park. Right. That was for sure. So that could be something that could be included to include that. So Hunter Park is about 7.5 acres. That's a large piece of land right. that can accommodate a lot. So we definitely wanted to find a way how to connect that to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. See if there's a way to... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I honestly believe there is a way. Uh, so do I. Sorry. Yeah, we can. It looks like we talked it. We did it. I know. When you were talking, I was like, "What? You're reading my mind." Yeah. Okay. We have so. a motion, uh, a second. second discussion. All in favor? Unanimous. Eighteen consideration and possible approval of the investment report for fiscal year 2023. Thank you, Mr. Madam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And happy belated birthday. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Mayor Council, short presentation. Um, so investments. So I always want to make sure we clarify for the public when we're talking about investments that public money is not being put into the stock market. We're not, what we're, we're talking about investments or government investments that are very, very safe. I can't say they're completely risk-free, but is. they are ultra safe. Um, what we are invested in, what we've been invested in is text pool. And text pool is an investment pool where multiple governments throughout the state of Texas invest funds. And then uh, depending on how interest rates are, we, we collect uh, interest off of that. So uh, we do have approximately $25 million, or well, we start with $25 million invested. And the current uh, rate is at 5.3589. Um, so just to summarize real quick, so we're breaking, breaking it down by quarters. So for the first quarter of this last fiscal year, we earned about $208,000 in interest and $217,000 and $344,000 off of that. Now, when it comes to those $25 million, I need to also clarify, it's not money that the city has you know, to be used for additional projects. That's money we've committed to existing projects that are not in the construction phase yet. So while it's waiting, we want to earn money off of that. Uh, and when it comes to this additional money, it cannot be used for, it has to be used for 
projects or similar projects that, that, that were authorized when we issued right. the debt. Um, just comparison with the previous year, we were making almost nothing. Interest rates were very, 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 very low. It wasn't until the fourth quarter when we made about $40,000. But as we know, interest rates increase significantly, which is a negative. But when it comes to investments, it's a positive. And when we were talking about the downtown improvement projects that we uh, that the council chose to move forward with, that's where some of the money is coming from, the investment money. So it isn't coming from directly from the taxpayers. Uh, almost half of it is going to come from investment earnings. Now, when we look into the future, we do need to be cautious. One, because construction is going to take off in the next couple of months on several projects, so we will have to start withdrawing from our investment accounts so we won't be earning as much, but we'll still be earning. The, the next uh, concept that council does need to be aware of is arbitrage. So there are certain IRS rules related to how much money can be earned off of government debt. Uh, government issued debt. There, there, there's a special formula that needs to be calculated, lots of items that need to be taken into consideration. So there's a limit on how much interest we can earn. After that, there are fees that need to be paid to the IRS. So within the next couple of months, we will have to contract with a, with a firm who will do that analysis, determine if any amount needs to be paid. Right now, we don't expect that, but we, to, in order to comply, we do have to. Uh, but those are just the items. This is, uh, you know, there's a, it's an action item, but in reality, it's just an information item. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. we Since that, that's just information. We approve. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Just for the sake of. All yeah. right. We'll go ahead and move to 19. Present presentation, discussion, and possible action on approval of business improvement grant program. Mr. Marquez. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. How are you guys? The BIG program. The big program, that's right. Are you going to play, what is it? Chopsticks? Do you have <laughs> chopsticks down there with a big piano? Oh, for the big, plot, the big project, BIG? Yeah. Um, I don't get it, the movie oh. big. I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm out of well, the 20-something group. Mayor and <laughs> City Council, um, every time we make any changes or improvements to any of our programs, we'd like to bring it back to you guys and, uh, for consideration and, of course, to update you guys on where we stand. Uh, during the last budget session, there was a $100,000 pool allocated towards uh, the program, which is the big program, Business Improvement Grant. All right. And there are a couple of changes that we want to make. Uh, there's some feedback that we got from the community uh, as well as from you guys. And essentially what we're trying to do this time around is that we want to expand the program. The business improvement program was a program created uh, originally in the first year to be accessible to businesses in the Rio Boulevard and the Indio Highway. Now this is the program where we are able to reimburse 50% of uh, cost for any improvements that are made to the location uh, or any purchase of equipment that are related to restaurant uh, equipment. Uh, that is one of the highest costs for restaurants, um, the equipment itself, the stove, the, um, you know, the, 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 not utensils, but anything that, that goes into the, the, the restaurant section, right? So again, what we're bringing here today is the second version of this, and the changes that we're going to be making is that we want to expand this, uh, this program to a citywide program. Uh, as we were going through the program, we got a lot of questions from business owners that they wanted to tap into this program, make improvements to their locations, but they were not uh, concentrated on the areas that we had assigned the first version. Now, the reason why we started on those two streets uh, in the first version was because there was a limited amount of funding, and we wanted to see if this was something that the um, uh, business uh, sector would, would take advantage of. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the program does cover any improvements to the uh, infrastructure. Let's say that they want to repave their parking lot or they want to make improvements to their buildings, get new windows, new doors, uh, do a paint job, or put up a sign. Uh, this is something that they would cover. Now, how does the, the program work? It is a dollar-for-dollar dollar reimbursement. Uh, of course, it does have to get approved first. Um, and we do a reimbursement up to $10,000. Okay. Um, Again, it's used for fa uh, facade improvement, uh, site improvement, or property or infrastructure. Right. Uh, we also cover uh, demolition, and as I mentioned, it's the restaurant equipment that we are able to reimburse. 
sure. You said dollar to dollar reimbursement, but I thought it was like 50% like matching. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so it's basically, like for it's like they spend twenty thousand, they're eligible up to ten thousand. Correct. Okay. Correct. And actually, um, that's a pretty good stopping point. Uh, the last year, even though we do a fifth or a dollar for dollar uh, reimbursement, uh, last year we saw five different projects uh, get approved. Now, out of those five projects, there was a total of one hundred thirty-three thousand dollars of uh, private investment made, and because there is a cap of uh, ten thousand dollars. Uh, the city only committed and paid out uh, 50000 mm -hmm. So the return on investment, of course, right. like I said, is it's typically it's the investors that mm -hmm. already have to have an expense, which is much higher than the 10000 It's just an additional assistance for them. So, yeah. Um, now, the ineligible projects um, are, of course, projects that are not, that are not in downtown. Uh, in downtown, we do have a similar project or program. Um, and that one actually uh, goes up to 20000 just because that we know that historic buildings typically you know, require a little bit more of higher expense. Uh, unfortunately, we do not do retroactive uh, projects. We have been approached by uh, individuals who have unfortunately you know, um, made improvements just prior to the adoption of the program, so unfortunately we're not able to help them. Um, again, we do not do interior improvements, only if it's equipment itself. Uh, so if somebody wants to make improvements on the inside, we're not able to assist that. Uh, we also do not help uh, fast food restaurants. Um, so you know, let's say, kind of like the example of Denny's or Jack in the Box, they would not be eligible for this uh, still. This was also rules that were made in the first version of this. Uh, food trucks are not applicable, but uh, food, uh, food truck parks can. Again, if you want to make a uh, new the pavement, uh, you can, but food trucks themselves, uh, the actual truck itself, we do not. Uh, we're not able to assist. Uh, secondhand stores and used auto sales are, again, some of the items that are ineligible for this. Okay. As I mentioned, the biggest uh, change to this program is really that we're, we want to expand the city wide, uh, make it available to anybody and everybody that's within the city limits. And uh, again, because of the success that we saw on the first version and because of the request that we got from businesses and again, uh, from yourselves uh, as well, uh, we thought this was time to expand it. It's a great program. Uh, I'm glad people from all over the city can take advantage of it now. Well, if we vote for it. So anything else? No, that's it. That's right. With that said, I'll help you out. I'll make a motion. There we go. We have a motion to approve the, the recommended change by Mayor Pro Tem Davis, a second by Councilwoman Cruz. Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Oh, Some you. of these items are so easy. Yeah, yeah. they're good. They're good. Good stuff. Good stuff. 19. Presentate, no, 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 20. Uh, authorizing the interim city manager to negotiate and execute a contract utilizing the buy board cooperative purchasing program with a craftsman for playgrounds and park amenities equipment for the Via Romero Park in an amount not to exceed 350,000 in funding is available in capital improvement fund. Good evening, Mayor Council. So what this item is, it's basically authorizing a city manager um, as we get closer now to finalizing negotiations for the construction for construction of Yellow Med Park, uh, we do have a playground vendor that we still we will selected to provide the play equipment for the park. Um, that includes a playground, inclusive playground, safety surfacing, uh, shade structure, the rubberized surface, surface on the trail itself, walking trail, a uh, site amenities such as um, pet way stations, uh, shade structures, benches, uh, trash receptacles and uh, a water fountain. Uh, so we just need authorization from council uh, to allow the city manager to negotiate and authorize producers of the playground equipment. Okay. Do you have any rent fees of which are we getting? Sure. Yes. Uh, let me put that. Yes, so the playground amenities, it's a play unit with an ADA ramp, which basically means it's all inclusive. Good. And I'll, I'll put, I'll, I'll, we do have uh, detailed pictures of the mm -hmm. playground surface scene. So uh, it does have a hip stru stru structure shape, which mm -hmm. is the most economic shape you can get. Mm -hmm. uh, play unit, board and play center surfacing, the top trail surfacing, which is uh, the, the rubberized surfacing that's going to be on the walking trail, side shades, rectangular tables, such as what you see at the sports complex, which is mm -hmm. smaller for shading. Uh, uh, trash receptacles, a bike rack, 
patent owner drinking fountain and petway station. So this is a layout of the park. Um, I know it's been a while since we looked yeah, at it. I know that's why. I am. Yes. <laughs> so so uh, as you as you can see, there's a lot of greenery in there. We did mm -hmm. do a lot of of, of uh, trees, and because of, dre of tree canopies really work in our in mm -hmm. our community, as you've seen in Hondo Galea Park. Uh, we do have two shape two bench uh, two little small pavilions the uh, <clears throat> the playground and stuff in the middle of the parking lot um, but it's it's basically a one point five four five acre um, piece of land that we try to maximize um, this is the park lighting layout so it's one of the things we did fight to include for sure one include is just security lighting and park lighting mm -hmm. so, so our park users can use it into the evening time right uh, that's one thing we we seen lacking in other parks um, this is the, the playground itself. Uh, this is one of the side views. Uh, as you can see, the ADE ramp itself, inclusive ramp. Mm -hmm. That's this is the other side view. But the probably the best layer you can get is this one. It really explains to you all the play value itself. Uh, it does have uh, three slides on it, a couple of transfer stations, uh, a couple other other amenities. Uh, but that it's, it's the for the for the price. This, this is a pretty good play. I can tell you, it, it has really, really good play value which is always our key, is to make sure that for the price, we talk about play value, how it can be used. So this one, it is all inclusive. It is for ages two to 12. That's one of the things, you see other playgrounds that are five to 12, some of them are two to five, but we wanted to make sure that number regardless of the age, you right. can use it. Yeah, I like the fact that it has a, a wide age group as well as. Yes, yeah. It's and all that's, inclusive, it's really that was why I asked, because I yeah. want to make sure that you have everything, I've always. And it gets a little bit tricky, because. Mm -hmm. At that I know point, it's difficult you, at times, but yes, yeah, but there's, yeah, there are ways. You lose a little bit of value, but the fact that that age level is really wide, I think that's what we're target. Mm -hmm. A lot most players, most player companies that I work with, they do five to twelve, two to five, because mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to find that two to twelve, because that's a huge age it's range. Too big. Yes, yeah. but the, what makes it two to twelve is really that all inclusive ramp mm -hmm. allows the two to five to to play in that area, while the upper station is more for your five to twelve, so it kind of encompasses both mm -hmm. areas. So this is the top trail surfacing. Um, so when we uh, when we spoke about the surface surfacing for the actual walking trail, we made sure that we weren't going to have at least a repeat what we had in uh, the Bona Park. Right. I was going to ask that. Yes. Right. So we specifically asked something that's meant for walking trails, biking trails, cart paths. Um, so this safety surface surfacing basically it's a mixture of what you'll see in playground surfacing, but you also throwing pea gravel in there um, because it's 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 it's, 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 it's yes. So that's the one thing we're really hard, hard on. Uh, we feel like we've got the best product in the market that's on there right now. Um, it's a little bit costly, but we do believe it's going to be made. It is going to serve a really good purpose. It, it's, it is supposed to last the test of time. Um, it, one thing we do have to go back and look at it is like every two years it does need a uh, resurfacing, not resurfacing, but more of, of a bonding to make sure that it's not tearing apart, right? We just go in and recode re re it. It costs about like $2,000 every two years to recode it. And that's that's the uh, basically what's in the cross map. Okay. I'll entertain the motion. Yeah. We have a motion Council to second. approve. Mayor Fulton Davis, a second. By Councilman Cruz, discussion. All in favor? Thank you for all those details, by the way. Yes, sir. You can tell that you're well versed in yeah. all this. Stuff. <laughs> Item 21, consideration on possible action on awarding slash rejection of request for qualifications RFQ 2023-009 for professional services, independent accounting, and audit services. Well, can, I, can we, I'm going to make a motion to take this item into executive okay. session, please. We have a motion to take this into executive session by Mayor mm -hmm. Pro Tem Davis. I'll second. A second by Council Cruz. Discussion? All in favor, it is unanimous. And I'm assuming it's pursuant to section 551.071, yeah, consultation with the attorney. Okay. Before we move to executive session, we want to pull item number 26 into open session. We have Mr. Munoz making a presentation. Perfect. At this time, we'll go ahead and discuss item 26. Is it, so it's not going to set up for a bit. We'll discuss it in open session. Yes, we may take it back to executive as if it's needed. Okay. No, but for now, we want to put it in open session. So. I'm just going to read it. Executive session pursuant to section 551.071 of chapter 551 Texas Government Code consultation with attorney regarding interlocal agreement for broadband feasibility study and return to open session for possible action. We do have Mr. Munoz that has a presentation. How are you doing, sir? Yes. We're good.
So, good evening. My name is Jose Munoz. I'm, uh, for the last seven years, I've been uh, working at, uh, as the Chief Technology Officer for the school district. And I'm here to just uh, make you aware of all these opportunities that we have for broadband. And broadband is internet access that uh, the federal government is uh, trying to fund all the um, high need areas throughout the United States. So, uh, what is broadband? Broadband is high speed internet. It allows us faster, more efficient internet connectivity compared to traditional dial up or narrow brand connections. Broadband connections are always on, provide faster download and upload speeds. Common broadband technologies include DSL, cable, fiber optic, satellite, wireless communications, making it essential for various online activities and digital services. So these are the types of uh, internet service that uh, we're used to. We're dial up. Nobody uses dial up anymore. It it it, uh, it used to be up to 50 kilobits. We have DSL. We have cable connections. We have fiber. The new the new initiative that the federal government is is, is trying to implement is fiber. <coughs> so there's also wireless internet, but it's not very reliable. So as far as the school district is concerned, we, uh, during the pandemic, we applied for the Emergency Broadband Benefit Program. It was, it was during the COVID er, uh, year of uh, 2021. It, 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 um, it, it um, set aside $3.2 billion for emergency connectivity for students. We, we were able to secure 2,000 hotspots to give to each individual household so that students have internet access at home. We were able to secure uh, funding for Chromebooks. We were able to give students Chromebooks, all thanks to the federal government. So also, the affordable connectivity program was uh, provided to the community members to get discount internet service up to $75. Um, that was that was the replacement of the of the uh, of the previous program. We also use the E-rate program. That I, I'm not aware of this, if the city uses the E-rate program. The E-rate program provides internet service up to 80% discount of our internet service. Uh, we also get um, equipment, internet equipment, uh, also up to 80% discount from the federal government. Uh, recently, we implemented a 1.5 million dollar project in the school district where we only paid for uh, $400,000 for that. Um, so as far as the, the city is concerned or any entity that would like to apply for any new funding, there's $65 billion accessible from the federal government through the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act uh, implemented in 2020. There's also the Digital Equity Act implemented in 2021 that set aside $2.75 $2 billion for, again, internet access, broadband internet access. The American Rescue Plan, the ARPA plan, also set aside $10 billion for high-speed internet. And the, the BEAD program is the Broadband Equity Access and Deployment Program. Uh, set aside total of $42 billion that is that we can that the city can use to implement broadband projects. So this is kind of like a summary of everything that the federal government has released for for use for um, broadband projects. So this, this includes the USDA, the FCC, which is the E-rate program, digital equity plan. So we have about $50 billion out there that um, we can go out and apply as, as an entity. I gave you another presentation that uh, I, I don't have the slides here in, in the computer, but uh, just to make you aware that we, uh, as the city and, and the, uh, the school district, went to the city of FAR to, to see how they have implemented these monies and they've been very successful at that, and they, they're also using it uh, to provide to other cities that are um, uh, adjacent to Florida, Texas. So um, 
they've been able to provide internet access to every single one of their school, uh, their children that are enrolled in the school district for free, thanks to all this funding. Every single one, every single student that's in, enrolled in the school district in Far Texas gets free internet access. At home. At home, mm -hmm. through fiber, and it's uh, comparable to what you would get, the highest speed that you get here in, uh, what, through. What about <laughs> just people that live in the city? To, to, to they, the they if, if I can get you all to look at page number four, and any resident, which will be service mm -hmm. offerings, um, and correct me, Mr. Munoz, if anything mm -hmm. has changed, but residential right now for a basic user, 400 megabyte uh, is costing about $100 per month with our current internet Options, yeah. provider. Here, 500 megabytes is saying it, it'll cost us $25 to the current well, that's, household. That's, this is what the city of Far is implementing right now. That's their fee. That's their fee. So yes. it could be either lower, a little bit higher, depending on depending what they Depending on how many people actually sign up for the program. But we're talking about 500 megabytes. Yes. And right now, you said how much is? 400 is, is paying about $100 a month. So you would have better quality internet service or broadband service. Faster. Faster at a cheaper rate. So if you want to go all out and hire the one gig, it'll still be half the price. And we can offer it to the residents as well. This right? is just the residents. residents. If businesses. you look at commercial, well. commercial is also, you know. And these are all grants that are available, and the city would have to put up, you said 20%? Yes. 80-20. 80-20. But great. there's also, I, I, I didn't mention the, the uh, nonprofit organizations that are out there that are able to help us implement. The Even treatment. with that 20% yes. help? Yes. Us out. Yeah, so the city of Far is, is getting millions of dollars from nonprofits that, that are in helping them implement these these uh, okay. these programs. And if some of the state propositions pass, remember that some of the broadband initiatives will be available to state as well. Now, as far as feasibility study, which is the the item that you have uh, in front of you, uh, we already we already went out. The the ministry, the Methodist ministry, has already paid for a preliminary. Feasibility study that I, I've uh, forwarded to, to Mr. Morua. He has a copy of that. Uh, there's also, it's posted on the website. So the, our, we have a, a, um, a uh, consultant that is willing to help us from the city of FAR. And the city of FAR itself, they're willing to help us implement. Because they already have the plans. They already have an idea how to, how to do this. And, um, so they, they're recommending for us to do an, a more formal uh, feasibility study that is going to look at costs and so forth and okay. as far as for community members and so I, mean, I think this this will benefit uh, our re residences but also businesses can benefit yes. from this yes. of course oh, yes. yes so actually they're, they're recently they're selling internet to Mexico they they're making a, a profit through through uh, running a pipeline to Mexico to, to sell internet so service the possibilities are endless exactly mm -hmm. yes so this is part of the infrastructure, and uh, it would, it's going to benefit everybody. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, th this item is to enter into an agreement to fund the detailed study? Yeah, yes. we need a feasibility study to see where you can try to identify some of the funding mm -hmm. sources and stuff to try to implement. Allowing the city manager to go out and find Do you have any comments on this, Ivan? No, no, no. Just to add some detail to this, is basically the city of Far, which is the one who's going through the process, or has been has established this, has gone through the process, they actually became a service provider. So this is something that we're looking to, to also look at uh, how feasible it is here at the city. Becoming a service provider, now you can provide that service and put a fee to it. Mm -hmm. it's, it becomes somewhat as to what we have in Waterworks. Right, like a uh, utility. But for broadband, basically. Uh, so this is something that, uh, that we want to explore, the options. Right. I know we've been discussing with the school district that on board too. So we at least want to see how much it will cost the feasibility study. We'll come back and see how we pay for that. But at least to continue the process, yeah. we need that. And, and we can and offer we could, it at a cheaper price, yeah. right? And we could partner possibly with the school district? Of course. Right. Yes, yes. We, we have a, a lot of the infrastructure already in place that we could tap into and be able to expand the, the connectivity a lot easier. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's a really good project. I, I do mm -hmm. think it is a, a, a growth for our city. Yes, sir. Like I mentioned in an interview yesterday, I, I believe what the items in 
in the agenda today are growth for, for the city, and, and this is one of them. Well, infrastructure businesses, uh, business parks do look for this type of infrastructure and, and when they're trying to develop because they want reliable internet, if you want to see it that way. And a perfect example is what happened to us Saturday morning, I believe. Yes. When we, right. were, 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 when we were out yeah. for half a day and I have three kids at home. <laughs> so. Do we still need to take it no, well, no. We can vote on it. You guys are ready. I mean, that's fine. No, I make a motion too. I'll make a motion. I'm sorry. You, you take it. Okay. Uh, if, I'd like to make a motion to move on to allow the city manager to start negotiations in order to allow for an interlocal agreement for broadband feasibility study. We have a motion by Councilman Garcia and a second by Councilwoman Cruz. Discussion. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Thank you for being on top of, of this topic. Absolutely. At this time, we'll go ahead and go into executive session. Item 22, executive session pursuant to section 551.071 of chapter 551, Texas Government Code, consultation with attorney regarding interlocal agreement between the city of Eagle Pass and Maverick County and Eagle Pass Independent School District for use of public safety personnel during 2024 solar eclipse event and return to open session on possible action. 23, executive session pursuant to section 551.071 of chapter 551, Texas government code consultation with attorney regarding discussion to accept slash deny general service administration GSA response to the counter proposal regarding the purchase of the Camino Real Administration Building, Customs and Border Protection Building, and return to open session for possible action. 24, executive session pursuant to section 551.071, chapter 551, Texas government code consultation with legal counsel regarding contract negotiations for solar eclipse events and possible action in open session regarding same. And 25, executive session pursuant to section 551, Point zero eight seven chapter five five one Texas Government Code presentation on Project Flamingo and discussion authorizing acting city manager to negotiate terms for chap chapter three eighty agreement between the city of Eagle Pass and private investor and possible action in open session regarding same. We are also taking item twenty one into executive session, and we will be in executive session at seven forty five p.m. Any other item? <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Twenty-one. Consideration of possible action on the warning slash rejection of request for qualifications. <coughs> RFQ 2023-009 for professional services, independent accounting, and audit services. Um, I, I would like to make a recommendation. I, I mean, I know that basically all three are CPA firms, and uh, they're all qualified. But I would feel comfortable if we would. Uh, continue going forward with someone that we are more familiar with that has worked with the city for a long time with that in mind I would like to make a motion to reject the the recommendation and authorize the city manager to negotiate and um, negotiate I guess professional service agreement with Martinez Rosario and company we have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Davis is there a second did you have something to say can, can also get approval to execute Sure, that's fine. I'll second. With approval to execute. We have a, a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Davis, mm -hmm. a second by Councilman Garcia. Discussion? All in favor? We have three in favor uh, Mayor Pro Tem Davis, Mr. Garcia, Councilman Garcia, Councilman Cruz. I'll, I'll be against that one. <laughs> All right. 22, executive session pursuant to section 551. Point zero seven one of Chapter 551, Texas Government Code, consultation with attorney regarding interlocal agreement between the City of Eagle Pass and Maverick County and Eagle Pass Independent School District for use of public safety personnel during 2024 solar eclipse event and return to open session for possible action. Do we have a, a motion to uh, approve this agreement as stated in an executive session? I'll, I'll make a motion to allow city manager or uh, what is it um, uh, I forgot. Uh, uh, right. to approve the agreement the the agreement I was gonna say or, or the PD or fire department whoever shall be representing each department to go, go reach out to each the county or the district to create an interlocal agreement I, 
I'm sorry, can I add a comment? Can we also, would, would you be willing to include other, and other entities as needed? Yes, and any other entities as needed, as we as mentioned. Okay, we, we have a motion by Councilman Garcia. Second. A second by Councilwoman Cruz. Discussion, all in favor? Unanimous. 23, executive session pursuant to section 551.071 <laughs> of chapter 551, Texas government code consultation with attorney regarding discussion to accept slash deny General Service Administration GSA response to the counter proposal regarding the purchase of the Camino Real Administration Building, Customs and Border Protection Building, and return to open session for possible action. I want to make a motion, or is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to go ahead and proceed with the purchase of the Camino Real Administration Building or sell. Mm -hmm. Accept the proposal. Mm -hmm. Accept the proposal. We have a motion by Councilman Garcia. Second. Second by Mayor Pro Tem Davis. Discussion, all in favor, unanimous. 24, executive session. Pursuant to section 551.071, chapter 551, Texas government code, consultation with legal counsel regarding contract negotiations for the solar eclipse events and possible action in open session regarding same. No, we don't, no action needed no, on no this action. one. No action. 25, executive session pursuant to section 551.087, chapter 551, Texas government code, Presentation on Project Flamingo and discussion authorizing acting city manager to negotiate terms for Chapter 380 agreement between the City of Eagle Pass and private investor in possible action in open session regarding same. I go ahead and want to make a motion to go ahead and allow city manager to proceed with a uh, negotiation. We have a motion by Councilman Garcia. A second. Second by Councilman Cruz. Discussion all in favor? It is unanimous. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion to adjourn. Councilman Cruz, second by Councilman Garcia. All in favor? Unanimous. Let's Meeting go. Meeting adjourned. Nine o'clock on the dot. <laughs> <laughs>